Hi, everyone. Welcome to the American Solar Energy Society's very first webinar. We're so excited to have you all here and would first like to talk to you a little bit more about ACES before I hand it over to Stanley Fishbein, who will be presenting our webinar today. ACES was founded in 1954 and was the first nonprofit in the U.S. working to advance renewable energy. We need your support now more than ever to accelerate the transformation to a 100% renewable energy and sustainable living society. You can help us today by joining the American Solar Energy Society at ACES.org. ACES was founded to share information, events, and resources such as this webinar to cultivate community and power progress in our industry. Some of our events include the National Solar Tour happening in early October this year, as well as the National Solar Conference that will be held August 5th through the 9th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'd also like to personally invite you all to become members of ACES and you'd access to any future webinars we'll be hosting as well as discounts to events such as the National Solar Conference and many other benefits that you can find listed on our website. Today we're offering all of you a 25% off discount to join as professional memberships or as members. This includes our senior professional, regular professional, and supporting professional memberships. All you need to do is go to aces.org slash join and use the promo code ACESWebinar, all one word, to receive the discount. You can look in the chat room for a direct link and more information about the discount. We'd like to invite everyone to participate in the webinar by sending in questions or comments to the chat room that Stanley can then review and answer after his presentation, time permitting. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce your presenter, Stanley Fishbein, who'll be talking to us about selling commercial solar and the traditional operating leases key role. Mr. Fishbein, Mr. Fishbein is managing partner at Cleanview Capital, an equipment finance company that specializes in providing leases and loans to commercial and industrial companies nationwide for their acquisition of solar systems. With more than 35 years of diversified equipment leasing experience, Mr. Fishbein has held positions in the commercial equipment leasing subsidiaries of ABN Amro Bank, the Chrysler Corporation, Citibank, and Textron Corporation. He holds a Master of Law degree in taxation from Boston University School of Law, a Juris Doctorate degree from Suffolk University Law School, and a degree in accounting from the University of Massachusetts. Again, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask anything. Okay, thank you, Carly, <laughs> for that nice introduction. And thank you, American Solar Energy Society, for the opportunity to speak today. Okay, good thank afternoon, you, everyone, for that and nice welcome to the first webinar thank you, of American, American Solar, Solar Energy, Energy Society's, Society's the new webinar to series. Today. We all share a common goal of promoting the, the adoption and use of the, the world's American most Solar abundant Energy energy Society's new So I hope you find today's session to be educational as well as helpful in increasing solar system sales. Let's start by looking at today's agenda. Since we each got involved with solar in different ways, I thought it might be interesting to share with you my story. I will then discuss a business owner's objectives when considering solar for his or her company and how to distinguish yourself from your competition. After a review of basic selling skills, I will then define a lease in simple terms and explain how a traditional operating lease may be used as a de facto method of financing. I will explain why capturing the monetized value with the federal income tax credit is the number one problem for most privately owned companies and how the traditional operating lease solves this problem and helps customers achieve objectives that are not addressed by power purchase agreements or solar industry leases. My review of traditional operating lease features and the benefits derived by customers will then be followed by a comparison of the cost of ownership when using a traditional lease versus a loan. I will then be glad to answer questions after my presentation. First up, my background. As a big believer in education, I became a tax lawyer and accountant and spent my first career developing income tax strategies for clients. This led to 35 years in the commercial equipment leasing industry, 
where I utilize my knowledge and experience to provide optimized financing solutions to clients acquiring various types of equipment. While networking with energy professionals, I met Wilden Fishman, founder and president of the New York Solar Energy Society. NISIS, as it is known, is a chapter of ASIS, the American Solar Energy Society. I joined the NISIS Board of Directors, and over the past 10 years, I have to tell you, I have learned a lot about solar and renewable energy in general, as well as climate problems and solutions. So if you are interested in these topics, I highly recommend you join ASIS and a local chapter. Your financial support and active involvement will be mutually rewarding, I assure you. My popular presentation at NISIS events, Making Solar Affordable, was the basis for the Clean Energy Ownership Program, a program that I created for companies seeking more value from solar than available from solar industry programs, as well as an affordable path to solar ownership. The linchpin of the program is the traditional operating lease provided by a federally regulated bank with more than 50 billion in assets. So, as more companies want to show off solar installations to their customers, it is becoming easier for you to get a meeting. Once you have your foot in the door, however, it is best to keep in mind the company's primary objectives, grow the business, increase profit, and build long-term value. Grow the business, increase profit, and build long-term value. At your meeting, your prospective customer will expect to hear how they can use solar to reduce their electric expense. Do that and give them more. Why? Because savvy business owners want more value than just cost reduction. Trust me. I've heard people say customers maximize value when, from solar by paying cash. Those folks don't realize, however, that most privately owned companies in the U.S. today are tax pass-through entities and therefore cannot use an income tax credit. Making matters worse is the fact that many company owners also cannot use a tax credit because they have good accountants that have implemented various tax planning strategies. However, even when the tax credit can be used by company owners on their personal tax returns, conserving cash in the business rather than saving personal income taxes is usually a higher priority. That's what company owners tell me all the time. Why is this? Because it doesn't make good business sense for most companies to tie up cash in any type of long-lived equipment or obtain tax savings outside the company when that cash can be used to grow the business, increase profit, and build long-term value. There are two examples that I use to demonstrate how conserving cash in the business can achieve company objectives. First, companies working with a bank line of credit will reduce interest costs, thereby increase profit, when more cash in the business will reduce the need to draw down a bank line to fund operations. And more cash in the company helps maintain balance sheet compliance ratios required by the bank line. The second example is even more compelling. Assume that a company has a 20% profit margin and turns its inventory twice a year. Would you want to tie up cash and equipment or earn a 40% annual return on that cash when you invest it in inventory? I think the answer is a no-brainer. And by using the traditional operating lease as an affordable path to ownership, the company still enjoys solar energy savings. It's like that old expression, having your cake and eating it too. So you have the opportunity to distinguish yourself from your competition by demonstrating more value to potential customers. What are you going to do? Your first objective is to develop a relationship as a trusted consultant. By taking a holistic approach to all of your customers' objectives, and not simply pitching energy cost reduction. 
A key first step is to ask a lot of questions. Who are the company owners? Who is the decision maker? Is the company a tax pass-through entity? Who, if anyone, can obtain value from a tax credit? Is the company owner a tax-exempt entity, such as an ESOP, that's an employee stock ownership plan, that cannot use a tax credit? Or a company that has a large research and development tax credit carry forward that also would be precluded from using the solar tax credit? Who owns the realty on which the solar system will be installed? Are there capital budget limitations? What are the other needs or uses for cash in the business? Another good question to add to the list, the most company owners will answer by the way, is how much is your company's annual sales revenue? The answer will be an early indicator for what size project the company could possibly afford. And therefore, just as important to know as how many panels you can fit on the roof. Selling 101. It's all about basic sales principles. Basic sales principle number one, ask a lot of questions as we just saw on the previous slide. Ask a lot of questions because the answers will help you formulate an effective presentation, including a proposal and cash flow projection that will be appropriate for the customer's situation. Know your customer is another basic sales principle, by the way. The cash flow will show how the value of tax benefits comes together with any available local, state, or utility incentives and an appropriate financing method to make ownership of the solar system affordable and profitable for that customer. Your proposal should be concise and to avoid confusion, not include a comparison of more than two financing alternatives. Knowing the benefits of each and how they apply to a customer's situation will support your recommendation of the one that will optimize value as opposed to maximize, optimize value and best achieve your customer's objectives. Another way to differentiate yourself from your competition is to understand and use business terminology. For example, Net present value of cash flow demonstrates an immediate increase in the value of realty as soon as the attached solar system is switched on and is considered by CFOs to be superior to payback as a measure of return on investment. A Harvard Business Review article about NPV is on the CleanView Capital's website if you're interested in learning more about NPV. It's a very effective measure. Uh, to consider. If the customer says, come back next year because there's no money in the budget, overcome that objection by asking if it is the CapEx budget he is referring to. And if so, point out that operating lease payments will be made from the operating budget, not the CapEx budget. The operating budget where there could be more money as well as where there is a better matching of lease payments to energy savings. Also important to understand is income tax credit and depreciation rules and why levelized cost of energy over the life of the solar system rather than over the term of the financing is the appropriate metric. Knowledge of financing program features as well as benefits will help you quickly answer customer questions and overcome objections before they fester and create a roadblock in the selling process. To be successful in selling commercial solar, however, you do not have to memory as well as where there is a better matching of lease payments to energy savings. Also important to understand is income tax credit and depreciation rules and why levelized cost of energy over the life of the solar system rather than over the term of the financing is the appropriate metric. Knowledge of financing program features as well as benefits will help you quickly answer customer questions and overcome objections before they fester and create a roadblock in the selling process. 
To be successful in selling commercial solar, however, you do not have to memorize everything if you have good substantive written material and people to support you. For example, at CleanView Capital, we supply solar sales professionals with detailed written material that includes lease structure, tax and accounting treatment, application and approval process, and frequently asked questions and answers. In addition to clearly communicating the environmental and financial benefits of acquiring a solar system, you should explain how the financing you recommend will benefit the company's broader objectives. Grow the business, increase profit, and build long-term value. Always stress the benefits, the benefits, and don't forget to ask for the check, meaning know when to stop selling and close the sale. Okay, time to dig, time to dive deeper into today's subject matter. What is a lease? A lease is a rental agreement whereby the lessee pays rent to the property owner, known as the lessor, to use the property for a period of time known as the lease term. Either a purchase option is exercised or the property must be returned. The lessee is not borrowing money, so no interest is paid. Rental payments are, as a result, 100% tax deductible as a business expense. This definition of true lease is applicable whether leasing a car, a solar system, or any type, any other type of property for that matter. Operating lease is the accounting terminology for a true lease. I refer to it as a traditional operating lease to distinguish it from the solar industry lease, which has been loaded up with additional features to make it similar to a power purchase agreement in terms of allocation of value between two parties. Features to make it similar to a power purchase agreement in terms of allocation of value between two parties. A capital lease is accounting terminology for a financing. It has an implicit interest rate and is treated like a loan for accounting and tax purposes. So I hope I've uh, shared with you this basic definition uh, because a lot of people get confused with the various lease terminology that's uh, used. Okay, so de facto method of financing. A lease can be used to eliminate upfront capital investment and provide an affordable path to ownership. In this way, a traditional operating lease with an attractive purchase option will not technically be a financing, but may serve as a de facto method of financing a company's acquisition of any type of property, including solar. This has been an acceptable technique for more than 40 years. More on this in a minute when I share with you an example from 1980 when leasing was used to solve a nationwide tax credit monetization problem. Customers prefer a quick path to ownership because ownership is their goal. Tax credit monetization. Let's first talk about tax credit monetization as why and why it is a dual problem. Limited liability companies, S corporations and partnerships cannot use a federal income tax credit because they don't pay income taxes. So there is no tax that can be offset with the credit. These so-called tax pass-through entities pass their taxable income and any tax credit to their owners in proportion to each owner's ownership interest. Some owners may be able to use a tax credit on their personal income tax return, while others may not, resulting in a loss of value. However, even when owners can use the tax credit, personal tax savings do not conserve cash within the business. We're needed to grow the business, increase profit, and build long-term value. This is a huge problem because most companies in the U.S. today are tax pass-through entities. The solution to this problem is the operating lease. 
when the lessor monetizes the tax credit and shares the value with the lessee by subsidizing the lessee's payments. Value is optimized within the business. So the traditional operating lease is an efficient, acceptable method used to monetize tax benefits and share that value between two parties, between a lessor and lessee. It solves the tax credit monetization problem for companies that cannot use a tax credit for a variety of reasons, including U.S. subsidiaries of foreign companies, subsidiaries of tax-exempt entities such as an employee stock ownership plan, and companies with large carryovers of research and development tax credits in addition to the common tax pass-through entity. A quick example of leasing as an acceptable technique to monetize and share tax benefit value was during an economic recession 40 years ago, when in 1980, the US Congress passed a 10% investment tax credit for all business equipment as a way to increase capital spending and boost the economy. Recognizing that many companies at that time could not use a tax credit, because they were not profitable and did not owe income taxes, the tax legislation included leasing as the prescribed method for a profitable company to be the owner lessor and share the monetized value of the tax credit by subsidizing the lessee's payments. Fast forward 40 years to today, and leasing remains an efficient method to, op to monetize and share tax benefit value between two parties and the document is still only just several pages long. Okay, let's talk about traditional operating lease features. The lease covers 100% of project cost. No interest is paid by the lessee. The monthly payments are fixed, and there's no escalation. The value of lessor's tax benefits, ITC and depreciation, is used to subsidize the lessee's lease payments, which is why the combination of the lessee's lease payments and end-of-term purchase will be less than project cost. Typically in the market today, we're seeing only 86 to 89 percent of solar project costs being the total of those lease payments and end-of-term purchase. So there's no interest being paid. The lessee customer is not even paying full project cost, only about 88 cents on the dollar. And all of the lessee's payments are 100% tax deductible as ordinary business expense. The monthly payments as the ordinary business expense and the purchase price actually will be written off using depreciation. The bottom line, is the resulting in the creation of an affordable path to ownership. Customer benefits. When using the traditional operating lease, the customer keeps all energy savings and keeps any utility, local and state incentive payments. In addition to sharing in the value of lessor's tax benefits, the customer has its own valuable tax benefits the 100% tax deduction of monthly lease payments and depreciation of its end of lease purchase price. Yes, companies are allowed to depreciate used as well as new property acquired for the business. As a result, the customer has greater energy savings and more overall value than available from a power purchase agreement or solar industry lease. Cash conserved in the lessee's company will be used to grow the business, increase profit, and build long-term value. Okay, let's look at the ownership cost comparison of the traditional operating lease versus a capital lease. This is an eye-opener because it dispels the notion that the customer is giving up a lot of value to the lessor when the lessor takes the federal income tax credit and initial depreciation deduction. Indeed, based upon a $1 million solar system and lease terms currently available in today's market, 
This comparison demonstrates that customers retain more cash in the business and achieve a lower after-tax cost of ownership when using a traditional operating lease as a path to ownership. On the left-hand side of the ledger, the operating lease uh, has a monthly uh, payment of 8,500 a month. Uh, seven years of payments will total $714,000. And the buyout at the end for $150,000 makes the customer's all-in payments $864,000. On the right-hand side, the capital lease, also known as a loan. The monthly payments are significantly higher than on the operating lease. And after 84 payments, the total paid in is the $1 million that was borrowed plus interest of $252,524 for a total all-in payment of $1,252,524. So the total payments for the operating lease saves or conserves, I should say, $388,000 more in the business by doing the operating lease rather than the capital lease alone. That's a significant amount of money that can be put to work uh, for work to grow the business, increase profit, and build long-term value. Here's the real eye-opener in this comparison is what happens on an after-tax basis. On the operating lease, left-hand side of the ledger, the tax credit is not monetized by the lessee. The 714,000 in monthly lease payments deducted at a 21% uh, income tax rate will save $149,940 in income taxes. When the customer purchases the system for $150,000 at the end of the lease, times 21%, writing off that purchase using maker's depreciation, the tax savings will be $31,500. For you subtract those two line item tax savings from the total paid and the after-tax cost of ownership for this customer using the operating lease is $682,560. On the right side of the ledger, the customer will be claiming the tax credit. And here we assume uh, the customer can use the full 30% tax credit, which will save 300,000 in income taxes. The interest portion of the monthly payments is tax deductible times 21% saves $53,030 in taxes, and the customer will take the initial depreciation on the solar system, which as you probably know, uh, the calculation uh, to be used first reduces the uh, lease amount by 50% of the tax credit, uh, which in this example leaves 85% of the lease amount as the so-called depreciable basis, what the customer is allowed to depreciate. So in this example, $850,000 times 21% tax rate will save 178,500 in income taxes. When you deduct those three uh, tax savings items from the total payment of a million two, the net after-tax cost for the customer to own this solar system is $720,994. It's roughly a $38,000 difference. So by using the operating lease as an affordable path to ownership, rather than take ownership from the get-go, the customer's all-in cost of ownership on an after-tax basis will save $38,000 for this customer. That's the eye opener. And uh, you should see the expressions on faces uh, in the audience when I've presented this at solar conferences around the country. 
Thank you for your participation in today's webinar. Several handouts with more information have been uploaded to the handout section of the chat room. I will answer questions as time permits. If, however, we do run out of time, feel free to contact me. We are now ready for Q&A. Okay, great. So we have a few questions uh, that have been coming in and I will uh, try to answer them. Uh, okay, so David Camp has asked, why is makers lower for a lease than a purchase? It's, it's not, David. Uh, Five-year makers is the depreciation method for solar and the percentages that you're allowed to write off under that five-year makers is the same every year. Uh, so whether you purchase it or lease it, it's the same. But when you're the initial owner of the system and claiming ITC, tax law requires you to reduce your purchase price by 50% of the claimed ITC to arrive at depreciable basis. And that's what you're allowed to deduct against those makers' percentages. When you're buying the system at the end of the lease, you're not claiming ITC. ITC is only allowed on the initial purchase for new systems. Therefore, there's no reduction in your depreciable basis for half of an ITC. And that's not double dipping, by the way. A lot of people in the solar industry have asked me, gee, isn't that double dipping if the lessor has already claimed ITC? How can the lessee uh, later on claim ITC? No, it's not double dipping because tax law allows every business who acquires an asset for the business to take depreciation. Just think, by the way, of all those old buildings, 50 years, 100 years old, they've changed hands many times. Every time someone buys that building, they get to write it off. Well, it's the same with equipment as well. And depreciation is the stated method for writing off a business investment in ownership. Let's see what we have for other questions. So related to that, why the reason for the 85% of 1 million? It's tax law. Tax law says customer is only allowed to write off um, the depreciable basis. And when claiming the ITC, the depreciable basis is uh, the purchase price less 50% of the ITC. So 30% ITC, half of that is 15%, 100% uh, purchase price reduced by 15%, leaves 85% is your depreciable basis. That's the write-off. Carly, was there a question that you wanted to ask? Yeah, I can go ahead and, and ask you a question that I have. Um, so, the question that I have is, how do I sell a solar system using a traditional operating lease when the monthly energy savings is less than the monthly lease payment? I think um, that I can answer a little bit of the idea that he gave me. So a monthly lease payment will be greater than monthly energy savings in areas with low electric rates and no state or local incentives. However, having a monthly lease payment lower than the monthly electric savings is not the objective of customers seeking optimization of energy savings as measured by the levelized cost of energy over a 25-year solar system life and an attractive return on investment. Customers should view the monthly energy savings as subsidizing their monthly payment the same way the lesser subsidizes their payment with the monetized value of tax benefits. To demonstrate this point and overcome a common objection of cash flow negative or out-of-pocket cash, present a 25-year cash flow like the one accompanying this Q&A. So I'll go ahead and share that with you all as well. Our little cash flow. 
Um, so this identifies years with relatively small negative after tax cash balances as amount invested as percent of project cost and highlights the key financial metrics, which will be reasons why the customer will want to use a traditional operating lease as an affordable path, path to ownership versus a program that offers only minimal cost reduction. So on this little cash flow that, uh, Stan was able to provide for us. We're able to see kind of what he's referring to on the cash flow. This is all in your handout section as well. So uh, just above the chat, there's a little Q&A polls and handout section. And underneath that handout section, there's a copy of the presentation that Stan went over, uh, as well as the cash flow that we're looking at right now and some other handouts that Stan wanted everyone to have access to. So from there, you can preview all of those documents or download them as you feel necessary. So, so this is an example of how a, uh, a, a cash flow can be used to overcome this objection when a customer says the monthly payment is greater than the monthly electric savings. First of all, that's typically not an objective of an operating lease. Uh, well, if someone wants that, uh, I typically tell them, go do a PPA or maybe the solar industry lease. But the traditional operating lease and the reasons why people would prefer to use this type of uh, program as an affordable path to ownership is because it's through ownership that they derive greater value than through those other programs. and. Uh, in, in this uh, example, which, by the way, is a real transaction uh, with a Middle East uh, contract, Mid Midwest contractor sent to me uh, just last week, uh, the project summary area is the assumptions uh, that the contractor has provided. Next to it, uh, the seven-year lease uh, summary, 84 payments, uh, and I'm having a little trouble enlarging this, uh, but it is in the chat room where you can uh, download it. Uh, it summarizes the monthly payments and the purchase at the end for the grand total all-in payments of 536776 on a project cost of 607464 So right off the bat, it demonstrates the customer is only paying in about 88% of project costs. Now the key financial metrics highlighted in yellow in the center, this is the reason why the customer would prefer to use this traditional operating lease. They obtain a 60% reduction in their uh, current electric rate over this 25 year life of the solar system. Uh, the customer's electric rate in this example live real example is 13 cents a kilowatt hour. The LCOE is 5.2 cents a kilowatt hour, 60% reduction. I've never seen a PPA, a solar industry lease that provides that level of energy cost reduction to a customer. And while the traditional operating lease is triple net, meaning that the customer pays for insurance maintenance and any property taxes if there's not a property tax exemption for solar even when adding in those costs the uh, reduction in energy savings uh, is is still many times greater than what's available from these other industry programs next to it uh, in addition to getting this tremendous reduction in electric cost is the net present value of the cash flows and whether the customer prefers to look at it on a before tax or after tax basis. This is an immediate increase in the value of the realty as soon as the switch on the solar system is turned on. Uh, an increase of anywhere from 400 thousand dollars to five hundred fifty thousand dollars an immediate increase in the value of their realty 
if they prefer to look at the internal rate of return metric on their investment, it's uh, roughly 36% return. Those key financial metrics are the reason why the customer would want to use this traditional operating lease. And they will not be deterred by the fact that the monthly payment may be greater than the monthly electric savings. They should view the electric savings as subsidizing their investment in ownership the same way that the monetized value of the lessor's tax benefits is used to subsidize their payments. So when you follow across these uh, columns in the one, years one through 25, you'll notice it's negative cash flow in the first uh, four years. Uh, following it across, even after the, the tax savings, uh, the after tax cash column, cumulatively, it's negative. But the column next to it is the key column amount invested as a percentage of project cost. And this demonstrates that the customer has less than 3% of project cost invested. Yes, the customer should be viewing these negative cash flows, this cumulative negative cash amount as their investment. They have a relatively small amount invested on the path to ownership. So if a customer wants to own a solar system because it's really through ownership that they derive greater value from solar than these other industry programs. And therefore, they sh are prepared to invest an amount equal to 15% of lease amount to take ownership after this seven-year lease. It shouldn't bother them that they have less than 15% invested along the way to ownership. And even in that eighth year, after they pay for the equipment on an after-tax basis, cumulatively, they have less than 8% of project cost invested. And then after that, their cash flow, uh, nothing invested uh, for the rest of the, the solar system's life. So when, when you present the numbers in this way, you don't get pushback from customers, business customers, saying, gee, I'm out of pocket cash, or it's negative cash flow. Uh, no, these customers, these savvy business owners, they want more value from solar than just minimal cost reduction. And that's reflected in the key financial metrics section. And uh, this is how projects get sold in states with low electric rates and without uh, strong state or local incentives to supplement the energy savings. So that's what I wanted to uh, share with you in answer to that question. We have another question. Yep, well, there's a few more questions in the Q and A, or we can go over um, some of the questions that I have. Okay. Uh, what if the lessee is a tax exempt organization? Well, unfortunately, tax law does not allow a lessor to monetize ITC when the lessee is a tax-exempt organization. So we cannot offer, or no one can offer, a uh, traditional operating lease or any type of operating lease to a tax-exempt entity uh, because there's no tax credit monetized value to be shared. That's why you see a lot of tax exempts doing PPAs or uh, just a loan or capital lease. Uh, there could be a government finance program uh, which has a interest rate below a commercial rate for uh, municipal, county, and state government organizations that reflects the tax exempt nature of the interest that they pay as an alternative for those government entities. Great. Uh, Tom Mills has asked if there's a minimum DC system size or monetary amount. It depends on uh, who the lessor is. Uh, you know, at, at CleanView, we have a minimum $100,000. Uh, but others I know uh, do not 
offer operating leases unless it's a $1 million minimum size. So it all, all depends on the uh, provider and what their minimums are, which will vary from one provider to another. Uh, another question, David, it's worth noting that the PV system operates just fine after 25 years. Yes, I, I recognize that uh, for whatever reason. It seems to be standard in the uh, solar industry that people show 25 year cash flows. Um, that maybe has something to do with the, uh, the warranties by the uh, panel manufacturers and the, uh, the degradation uh, that's allowed. Uh, but in any event, good point, uh, these panels will last longer than 25 years, which just makes a good deal better, frankly. Uh, what else? Uh, okay, so uh, Walter has a question. What if the lessor is an LLC or a subchapter S corporation and the owners uh, or stockholders cannot monetize the ITC and or depreciation? Well, this is a perfect uh, candidate for doing the operating lease because in the situation that you described, no one can derive value from the ITC. So by the lessor monetizing and sharing that value by subsidizing the monthly payments to be paid by the, the LLC or S Corp is really the only way that that entity could derive value uh, from those tax benefits. There's a, let's see, an, another question uh, we're comparing a traditional operating lease, why is it better than using a PACE program, a property assessed clean energy program? Well, deriving monetized value from the federal ITC is the number one problem for most privately owned companies, as well as companies owned by nonprofit ESOPs uh, or, or other situations. The traditional operating lease solves this problem when the lessor monetizes the ITC and shares the value by subsidizing the lessee's payments that are 100% tax deductible. PACE does not solve the federal ITC monetization pro problem. Pa and in addition, PACE is not allowed by many mortgage lenders as it creates a priority lien on the realty, which is an increase in property taxes. Another good question has to do with uh, why is uh, the using a lease a better alternative to paying cash or taking out a loan to finance a company's purchase? Uh, well, if the realty may be sold during the first five years after equipment installation, and the customer is not the equipment owner, there'll be no give back of the non-vested portion of the federal ITC. That 30% ITC claimed up front vests 20% a year over the first five years. So there'd be no give back of the non-vested portion of the ITC if the customer, uh, rather than pay cash or finance the purchase with a capital lease or loan, could simply assign the solar system to the purchaser of the real estate during that five year period. And uh, lessors typically, after credit approving the buyer of the realty, would allow an assignment of the lease. Where alternatively, if the customer paid all cash for the solar system or took out a, a bank loan for the solar system, and then they want to sell the realty during the first five years and the solar system along with it, guess what? There's a clawback on uh, that 30% ITC that only vests 20% a year over that five year period. So if you think the customer may be selling their building within the first five years of the lease, a much better strategy for them is to do a lease versus a loan or paying all cash. 
Just want to remind you, Stan, we probably only have time for about one more question. Okay. In that and case, here's, here's, here's a quick one, Carly. How long is the traditional equipment lease document? The good news is it's only several pages long, and it's a generic document that will be familiar to anyone who has leased business equipment, such as copiers, telephone systems, and machinery. And as a result, projects do not get delayed uh, when it's short, familiar documentation that's presented to the customer. How's that? That's great. Um, yeah, we have uh, two minutes. Um, if you want to go over any final documents or um, other quick questions that may come up. Um, well, I think I've pretty much gone through uh, the material and the questions that I wanted to cover today. I want to thank everyone for being a good audience, and I apologize for the technical difficulties that we've experienced. The good news is you can get a recording of this webinar uh, afterwards, and please go to the chat room. There are material there that you can download, as well as that sample uh, cash flow that I ran through. And uh, if anyone has any questions on the uh, content of today's webinar or the things that I discussed, uh, please reach out to me and I will be uh, happy to uh, answer those questions. Thank you again yeah. and thank you American Solar Energy Society. Yeah, thank you so much, Stan. Again, we apologize for some of the technical difficulties that we did run into today. Um, this is our first webinar and um, we, we enjoyed having you all here and glad that you all were able um, to stick with us throughout the day. I will be sure to email you guys um, who have attended all of the handouts that we had available today um, just to make sure that you guys have all the information that you can have. Um, in the handout section as well uh, it is some information, some direct contact information for Stan. So any of the questions that he was not able to get to, please feel free to contact him um, with those questions that you want to get answered. And um, yeah, thank you again for joining us. There will be another webinar scheduled in the future, so be sure to sign up on our email list to get those updates. And we'll have all of these technical difficulties figured out by then and everything will be smooth sailing. So thank you again, everyone, for being here and um, you know, roughing through it with us today. Uh, Stan, did you have any last words? Uh, keep smiling and uh... Uh, may the sun, <laughs> sun, uh, sun keep shining and generating good, clean uh, solar energy, the most abundant uh, energy source known to man. Beautiful. Okay, great. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Carly. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time.